Sean Haney here with RealAgriculture.com and Real Ag Radio, World Radio 147, Sirius XM. I'm joined right now by the Shadow Minister for Agriculture for the Conservative Party of Canada. It is Mr. John Barlow out of Foothills. John, how are you doing? I'm great, Sean. Thanks very much for having you. Always great to chat. The House Ag Committee completed its, its, I guess, look into food prices and whether or not you know, grocery, the, the grocery industry was uh, doing things that were you know, harming Canadians or taking advantage of the, the inflation situation. Uh, what can you tell us about the, the findings? Yeah, you know, I, I actually found it quite, uh, quite revealing. Uh, and I was actually in Manitoba this week, a meeting with some producers, uh, Keystone Ag- Agriculture producers in Manitoba Pork. But I ran into uh, a carrot uh, farmer, and he was one of only a few left in the Portage uh, La Prairie area. And he was explaining to me that he's just been nickeled and dimed to death by the large grocery chains on on fees and fines and those types of things. Something I, I didn't really know a whole he- whole heck of a lot about until we did this study, uh, and it became quite clear that there are some things that we need to address. And it, it showed the importance of the grocery code of conduct uh, that there are some uh, transparency and accountability to the big grocery chains when they try uh, to implement these fees and fines on producers. Uh, certainly there has to be more transparency, more clout uh, for the Competition Bureau to be able to dig into the numbers. Certainly we had the economists that were there as well as the grocery chains were, were quite adamant that you know, their, their uh, profit margin on food is about 4%. But they won't break that down in terms of where their profits are coming from, from pharmacy or, or clothing or, or other goods that they're selling at the grocery stores. And I think that has to be much clearer to Canadians uh, and certainly the, the Competition Bureau, for it to do its job, it must have all that data. I, I think as a Conservatives, we will be doing a dissenting report on, on this and it's not something we do very often, um, but the Liberals and the NDP refuse to include the impacts of uh, the carbon tax is having on, on food inflation and food costs. Uh, and I, I think if you're gonna have a discussion on, you know, an honest discussion on, uh, the, the rising cost of food, and we've seen that the Canada Food Price Index is forecasting a 34% increase in food over the next two years. Those are staggering numbers. Uh, so if you really want, want to be honest about what those costs are and where they're coming from, we have to discuss all of the issues. And for them to vote down a recommendation to study the impact the carbon tax has on food prices and the supply chain, uh, I think was um, disingenuous and certainly a uh, decision made on ideology, not on, on data. So yeah. um, I, I think we could could have dig, dug a little deeper, but uh, s- some interesting revelations came out of it for sure. Yeah, yeah. The, the Retail Council of Canada was out with some statements here this morning, and they said the, the findings were markedly different from the surrounding rhetoric at the outset of the hearings. Clearly, they're seeing a, a, a win here for their stakeholders. Yeah, you know, one of the recommendations uh, put forward was a, a windfall tax on, on the large grocery chains. And, and that just didn't prove uh, from the data that we were able to see that that, that was uh, necessary or, or factual. Um, so that recommendation was not, was not approved. Um, again, uh, I think that is a pretty fair statement that uh, we weren't able to, to see any, you know, gotcha moment or, or un- unveil some, some hidden you know, mass profits that these these uh, grocery chains were making, uh, but there is you know lack of competition there. Uh, there there is a lack of transparency in terms of of where they are making their profits. And you know, my assumption or what I would get from this is they're making most of their profits from from pharmaceuticals, and and they don't want to, don't want it to reveal that uh, too openly. But I think uh, we should be able to get more of this information or or more protections. Let's say, Sean, for for our on the ground producers uh, when it comes to some of these fees and fines that are being charged to them by, uh, you know, the Loblaws and the Metros and the empires out there. John, thanks a lot for joining us here today. Really appreciate it. All the best to you. And uh, hopefully you uh, get a chance to get out of Ottawa uh, sooner than later. Looking forward to it. Thanks very much, Sean. I appreciate uh, your interest and everyone's support on, uh, you know, contacting and emailing and calling the senators on 234 and, and putting some pressure on them to get this moving again. <laughs>